right, everybody, we'll wait just a few more minutes to let everybody uh, connect up and then we'll get started. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Black Hills AI webinar, Auto Users Workshop. A recording of this episode and the slides will be made available on the Black Hills AI YouTube channel, as well as the Black Hills AI website. Feel free to enter any questions using the Q&A feature in the Zoom menu. We invite you to follow us on LinkedIn and visit the Black Hills AI website to learn about our other webinars. And with that, I will turn things over to Jim. All right, well, hey, thanks everybody for joining up today. Uh, today, uh, what I'm going to show is um, how to get a Office Action Response shell from our new, uh, newly released uh, Black Hills AI Power Prosecutor Plus um, plugin for Microsoft Word. We have Office Action Response shells that we generate uh, with automation. Uh, from that, you can pull up a uh, um, uh, a Office Action Response shell. They're free for our docketing customers. And if you're not one of our docketing customers, um, you should be. But uh, um, but anyway, so we offer shells uh, outside of just the uh, to our docketing customers. We provide them separately as well, uh, and they're very. Very, very affordable. Um, they're maybe 20% of the cost of shells from the other providers in the market. Um, and yeah, and we can set them up. They're generated automatically and they're available uh, um, within moments of us getting the data and, and, and such from the US Patent and Trademark Office. So that being said, why don't I go ahead and start? I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna start in Microsoft Word today as opposed to the AI tool, just so you can see how we are generating uh, office action response shells or how you're able to access office action response shells. So in, once you have the Power Prosecutor Plus uh, plugin installed, it'll show up in your menu. I'm on a Mac, so if you're on a PC, it'll look just a little bit differently, but uh, not too different. And so in here, you can click on the Black Hills AI Power Prosecutor Plus uh, plugin menu. You can select automatic shells. A window will show up over here on the right. This is within Word. If you're not logged in, um, it'll ask you to log in. And what you'll use is your um, the same login that you use to access um, the AI tool. Same, same as you use to access the uh, auto. And so in here, you'll have the application serial numbers of the shells that you have available to you. These are available, um, you know, we can uh, talk to you about how, you know, what's listed in there and whatnot. So, so anyway, so I'm going to select this one that's right at the top, because that's the one that I'm going to work on today. This is to prepare an office action response shell. So I click view shells and it retrieves the data and it shows me the shells that are available for that application serial number. And this is for an office action that was issued on 1126. And this is the most recent one that was generated for that. So I'll select on that. And the office action response shell will pull up in here. I just noticed just a small formatting issue. Now we can generate these shells according to any template that you uh, may have. And just doing a little little touch up on this one. This one looks pretty good. The template needs to be adjusted just a little bit for this one. But uh, uh, but yeah, so we can generate these templates for any format that you have and uh, differentiate based on, I don't know, um, different data that we have uh, about your um, your matters. So we can use different shells based on that. So, so in here, you'll see that the highlighted parts are parts that I just, one that we have set up for doing demos. These are highlighted because they're parts of the attorney. You may want to look at and edit or whatever before, before they file. We have the claims in here with the claim status identifiers. We have the amendments and such backed out from your previous um, response, or I'm sorry, the markups uh, removed as 
what I should say. There's a little typo here. Nope. All righty, because claim one is still pending up there. Yep. So I just look at this, make sure everything's good to go. Everybody has their own pet peeves. I like to make sure there's an and in there in some spaces. And so yeah, so we have a shell here, good to go. Pretty standard looking shell. This one's for Acme Data Company, Kelso, California. If you've never been to Kelso, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It is really in the middle of nowhere. So, okay, so that's good. So now I'm going to change. So that's what the shell looks like. That was generated with an automated process. You'll note too that um, as long as we're in here talking about this plugin real quick, I can analyze the claims such as I can create a claim tree so I can visualize the claim dependencies. Let's see that with the claims here. It takes just a second. Alrighty. And you can also do antecedent basis checking. Right now, this plugin is available. If you go to the uh, um, uh, the plugin store, the the add-in store that uh, Microsoft has, and you just search on Black Hills, and you'll find it. It's called the Power Prosecutor Plus. So yeah, so this identifies potential uh, antecedent basis issues for you. And uh, this is, I think, this was a case that I drafted way back in the day. Uh, when I was still prosecuting uh, uh, patent applications, so there's probably a whole bunch of errors in it. But uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, that's some other. Oh, this is also kind of neat. Um, you can select if you select patent documents, that gives you uh, uh, direct access to documents in the electronic file wrapper. Of, of, of a patent application. I can click on that for this one. It'll open it in the browser window. When I do that, I'll go ahead and share that with you real quick, just so you see it. I can figure out what I'm doing here to stop share. I can't, oh, here it is. Stop share, and then I will share again. Screen share, we'll go to Chrome. Okay, so this is directly from the, so this web page comes up directly from clicking on that link within the, um, within the plugin. You can get all the documents, you can get your references. So typically you can't, yeah, there they are. You can get the references that were cited in the case. Uh, non there's no non patent literature. So yeah. So anyway, so that's uh that's there as well. Um, so then we can go into the power prosecutor, or or not the power prosecutor into our uh, auto our AI tool. So okay, uh, you also have the ability to get examiner analytics uh, directly from a link inside the uh, um, the web plugin too. So. And right now, those are available for free in the plugin, even if you're not, uh, um, uh, even if you're not a customer of Black Hills, you can presently access all that. You're not able to get the shells for free um, uh, without being a customer, but um, you can access the uh, the antecedent basis checking for free and and so on. So one caveat on that is that uh, um, the um, the antecedent basis checking may not identify the claims if they're inside a shell that is not generated by us. Um, that will be updated soon. Uh, so it'll identify claims pretty much anywhere. So, okay, so let's just jump into uh, what we're gonna do today. Um, so since we have the shell, let's create a new project inside of, inside of auto. And this is gonna be to prepare an office action response. So I'm going to click on the eyeball to see uh, more info here. I want to open the files and I'm going to upload some files here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a copy of that shell we just generated. I'm going to uh, upload a copy of the office action, uh, the original application that was filed in the matter, and then the references that were cited in the office action. And I'm just going to drag and drop those right into here. And they are going to upload. 
I have the I have them appropriately named. And of course, you can edit those names once these are uploaded and they've been processed. Um, you can change the names if you want those to be changed. So in parallel to this, I'm going to leave the shell open inside of Word. And I'm going to just copy and paste some things into that shell. And then when we're done here, we'll have um, a rough draft of an office action response. So, all righty, this is just about done. Uploading and such. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and select the skill. I'm going to select uh, from here. I'm going to want to take a look at uh, a one-on-one analysis. So, so I have that loaded up. So let's just take a look at the office action. I, I happen to know there's a one-on-one -on -one rejection in there. So, all right. So the one twelves have been withdrawn. And there's a 101, okay? So let's look at the 101 first. Well, I'm not going to take the time to read the 101 rejection right now. But I'll kind of say about the same thing usually anyway. But um, so let's just take a look at this. I loaded up this skill. This is a skill that um, is pretty detailed based on the USPTO guidance for 101, how to respond to 101, things to take into account. You'll see that it has um, the samples built into this skill. Most of you should have this skill available. I think we shared this one with everybody. We also have some uh, federal circuit cases in here. So we have a lot of information in, inside of this skill that we'll be taking into account. So we're going to just copy the prompt. Remember, if you want to copy in here, if you right click, it shows up with this link thing. That's not what you want. Um, what you just do the Go to edit and then copy or just use command C or control C depending on the computer you're on. And so let's just have it do an analysis for us real quick. Um, but I'm gonna tell them where to I'm gonna tell it where to look for the claims. Please analyze the claims in shell. Those are the claims that we want because I have the claims in this in these uploaded documents twice, once in the application and once in shell. The ones in shell have been amended during prosecution. So I want to make sure I point it to the right claims. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. I'm going to generate an analysis. The skill works pretty well, pretty thorough. So let's, here we go. You see that coming out now. So it's telling, telling us that, yeah, they likely recited a judicial exception to an abstract idea, meaning they should be patent eligible without amendments. So, okay, so we'll get this analysis. We could read through all of this. It's pretty detailed. It refers to particular examples and such. But this isn't necessarily how you argue uh, the case uh, directly. So we're, we're going to just take another step um, on this one once this analysis is done. Let me just say, please generate arguments to include in an office action response based on this analysis. We'll submit that. Now I think I actually typed that in pretty well. I'm usually pretty good about getting a few typos in what I, in what I type in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
I thought it's, I thought it said C A F C delusions there for a second. <laughs> like, whoops. <laughs> no, I just misread it. Okay. So it's generating some arguments for us, but um, that may not be exactly how I want to uh, argue it. So I can ask it to change that a little bit. Um, please uh, listen to a uh, single argument for uh, requesting this call. Do that once more, and then that'll probably give us something we can just copy and paste uh, for a rough draft. Uh, and of course, anything that uh, um, we take from our AI tool here, we want to make sure that uh, um, we read all of it, and make sure we agree with it, uh, make sure it's accurate. Um, yeah, it just says CAFC decisions in it. So we want to make sure that, you know, we remove that. But for a rough draft, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into the shell. One trick here, if you want everything here, you can copy and paste it like I just did there. But I remembered, wait a minute, that gives me the weird color background in when I paste. But if I come here on this, if I just mouse over this response, uh, I can click on this little button here to copy the contents of that message, the response message that we received from Otto into the clipboard. And I can come over to my Word document, I can paste it in, good to go. It pastes in in single spacing. So if you have your shell in uh, 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 one and a half line spacing, um, it'll be clear what you pasted in. Easy to tell it. So next, uh, we'll go back to the office action, see what the next rejection is. Next rejection type. Let me make this bigger. 101, 103. Okay. That's, we'll do this one a little differently. We can do it a couple different ways, but I have a playbook here that happens to have a um, 103 response skill in it, but I can also use this office action response generator that I have in mind, and we'll just do a simple prompt here and submit this. Let's generate a response to any 103 rejections and propose any needed amendments. Um, As far as amendments, um, if you've been using the tool and you've had amendments uh, suggested in response to any office actions, you'll probably note that there are not markups presently being provided. So it can be difficult to see what amendments are actually being suggested. So we're working on that to get you markups of those. So just be patient with us there, please. And we will work on getting those to you as quickly as we can. So, um, but here you'll see it is showing us um, some details on the amendments on, that we would make. So we're getting better at it, but, uh, um, but yeah. Okay, so let's just take a peek at this. Uh, it's being independent, we believe it's going to be just so much. Just for the following. I'm just taking a look at this real quick. Well, you may or may not choose to take um, to use these amendments, uh, but um, we can go ahead and copy this and consider that later. All right. Another thing that we can do, I'll go ahead and copy that for now. I'll just show you the another way to generate the 103. Okay. Okay, so that's another way to get you get a uh, generate a 103 uh, argument. 
can be to go to, so we want to change this skill. We'll do that one. And I'm going to tell it, please note this. Please note that the pending companies are in shell. Okay, so for this skill, um, For this skill, uh, it wants the doc. It wants the claims in a document called pending claims. So we could rename it over here on the left, but we can just do this. Whoops. Yeah. Well, it went ahead and took that prompt. I didn't mean to hit enter, but I did. <laughs> so it's going through this skill right now and generating the arguments. So while it's doing that, I'll just show you what this skill is. You should have this one in your own uh, um, in your own instance of the tool. So this is basically a list of all the different types of ways to respond to a uh, 103 rejection, the different types of arguments and the way to go about generating those. So. Uh, all right, so it actually didn't do, do what I wanted it yet. So let's see, prompt. Let's ask it to do this. Okay, there we go. Now we'll be able to do all this. It takes just a minute. There we go. All right, it's stepping through each of those steps from over here on the left. And then from this, while it's still spitting it out, um, Okay, that's about done. Let's see. Alrighty, let's go ahead and submit this. Let's get one single argument from that. This should work. While that's doing that. Let's go ahead and generate. <clears throat> All 
And someone said, I haven't seen if there's any questions. If there's any questions, no, I don't see any questions yet. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and submit them. And uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this now. Uh, All right, so that's not like I get it. Get it? Oops, sorry, I need to do it like that. Okay. Is there any proposed amendments? No. Okay. So I am going to paste this in to the shell. Okay. All right, so for now, we're going to be done in here. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to switch back to the document. Now we're in the document. I want to see more of this. Let's see. And we can start working on pasting this in here with respect to sync consolidated. Submit. Uh, let me just put this together real quick on the rejections. Submit. Anyway, you can touch it up here. Um, do it like this. Let's, let's traverse the claim rejections. Let's just do this. On the third 35 based on the site of references. And Submit that. Oops. Things are patentable. Okay, so then you can just play with this and uh, um, you can get the formatting right. Read through it all, make sure you agree with it. Um, and you have a pretty good start on your uh, office action response without even have really done much work. Um, then you can focus on refining this or making verifying it, making sure you agree. And you know, you might read some of these arguments and think, yeah, I don't buy it, or maybe you do. Um, um, but it enables you to do a, a more thorough analysis within the time constraint uh, uh, of your budget and and put together a, a, a thorough response, taking into account the different forms of arguments that you, you may not have, you know, um, 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 arrived at. So, so and, in you know, I'm just looking at this one right now, um, the te teaching away by prior art, um, it, it makes an assertion, but it doesn't really um uh give you any data on that but what you can do then is you can go back in the ai tool and ask for further explanation on the teaching away in the prior art um let's see here i can just do that real quick let me go back to that um share I'll go right here. these this is one thing that you can do too so keep the keep your session open uh, without deleting it while you're working on your office action response and if there's something that you see that you're like ah okay but that that's great but maybe i need more uh 
detail on that. And note like um, here it says what Doyle teaches. Uh, typically in my practice, I always, uh, I didn't say necessarily what something taught. Uh, I would talk about what Doyle describes or a particular, you know, reference describes. And so you can just keep that in mind. It, there may be words that the tool is using that you don't like, and you can tell it to regenerate this, but replace here. Don't use whatever word that you don't like. So um, the CIRX contemplator suggested for that's just specific pros to solving the problem. So then if we want, we could copy this, you know, argument in back over to the shell and use pieces of it or all of it about to, you know, provide greater detail on the teaching away of the references from the present claims. So through getting a shell, an office action response shell through the automated service, which is our, our automated service through the uh, uh, Word plugin, you can have your shells available immediately upon uh, uh, receipt of an office action, not having to wait for a paralegal or whomever on your staff to prepare the shells, or if you use an outside service, which the outside services charge, you know, uh, roughly $50 per shell, give or take. Um, I think the cheapest I've heard of them is maybe $35, um, but that's for large volume customers. But uh, what we provide them for pre door docketing customers, as I mentioned, they're available immediately. Um, you can pull them up inside a word that you're already working on, uh, your office action responses in. You can uh, then use the AI tool to help you craft your response. Uh, and it's conceivable that um, if you work your docket in a very, um, uh, you know, attentive way, each day you could go in and see which office actions you have. You can use the tool, the automatically generated office action response shells. And you can have a rough draft uh, prepared uh, in response to your, you know, in response to the office action within, you know, conceivably within maybe 20 minutes, maybe even less um, of um, receiving an office action and, and learning of an office action. And so if you do that on a, uh, you know, proactive basis, or even if you do it a week later, or a month later, or whatever, uh, you're able to get to, uh, you're not going to get to your final product immediately, but you can get that first draft out of the way pretty quickly. And you can take into account argument types that you may not otherwise be enabled to, you know, your, your time uh, budget may not allow you to, uh, um, to do. So we believe this will accelerate your practice and enable you to be more productive. Um, again, you know, you need to keep in mind that the, uh, AI tool is not always 100% accurate, but if you actively use it, read the output, take into account, you know, uh, you know what you know about the case, you can identify pretty quickly if the tool is, you know, maybe leading you a little astray or uh, is not being entirely uh, thorough. Um, different areas where you may need to um, prompt it to get a better answer or whatnot. Um, or just use the output to gu help guide you in your in your way as you're uh, preparing the office action response. So, so that's what I have today. Um, we think it's a compelling tool. We think when you integrate this in your workflows with the office action response shells that are available for free to our docketing customers, as I mentioned, saving you at least you know uh, you know for most firms. Um, if you're using an outside service, you're saving $50 right there by using a free shell and that per office action that you receive. Um, and they're available much more quickly, right? Uh, they're available immediately. No waiting. Um, you put, decide you want to work on this in the middle of the night and the shell's not prepared by either your in-house team or by the outside service provider. There's no need to wait for it. You have it available immediately. Uh, they can be customized. These shells can be generated with the automated process according to the format that you want. Um, works great. Um, integrate that with the the auto um, generative AI tool to prepare your responses. You can get your responses done very quickly, very thoroughly. Um, you can even have it proofread your 
your output, you know, your, your proofread your uh, final pr work product before you send it to your client to review or send it into the office for filing. So, already, well, that's what we have. I don't see any questions. If you have any need to uh, talk to us about that, um, feel free to, um, you know, send us an email at support at blackhills.ai or, okay, I'll put these down here. Um, support, whoops. That's where my mouse is upside down, so it's going to reverse. Okay. Support at blackhills.ai. What is going on here? AI. Or if you want to sign up. That's another one. Or you can send me a note directly. Uh, I have sleeves that are messing up my keyboard. Let's see that. Blackhills.ai. That's me. Jay Hallenbeck at blackhills.ai. So in the bottom right there, you can see in the message box there, you can see these email addresses. Feel free to email any of those. Uh, happy to help you guys out. Uh, if you need help developing um, some custom skills just for you or some playbooks or whatnot, feel free to reach out. We'll help you out, get you going there. And happy to have shared this information with you today. And if there's any questions, reach out about that as well. So that's all I have. Uh, Looking forward, we'll do it again in two weeks. And in the meantime, if there's anything you want us to show live on a uh, uh, one of these these workshop webinars, uh, send it over. So, all righty. Well, thank you. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you in two weeks.